Hi, I'm Paul Zak. I'm a behavioral neuroscientist at Claremont Graduate University, and I founded a software company called Immersion Neuroscience. So I've been working for about 20 years uh, to try to find out um, how to make life less crappy. Um, so I don't think anyone wants to uh, see a bad movie or watch a bad TV show. Uh, we don't want to have bad teachers or, God forbid, bad professors. Uh, we don't want an average uh, romantic partner. So how do we know if something is really great? Uh, and so that's a question that we use neuroscience to try to answer. Um, so the first question is, uh, if you ask people if they like something uh, that does not predict outcomes effectively at all, uh, in all those domains I just talked about. So consistently, 80% of Hollywood movies lose money. That to me blows my mind. How is it possible in 10,000 years of human civilization, which you've been telling stories, we don't know a good story from a bad story. And I think the problem is that we're using a very poor measurement instrument, which is our own embodied brains. And when those embodied brains are tired or hungry or want to give uh, answers that we find, um, uh, you know, people will like, then we, um, you know, we give biased results. So we need unbiased data. So we started creating experiences and measuring uh, initially neurochemical responses uh, to see if we could predict if people would do something difficult or costly after that experience was over. So for example, use public service announcements, talk about uh, kids with cancer. We paid people because we drew the blood before and after. And we looked at people who had an option to donate money to a childhood cancer charity and those who didn't. Uh, and then we had funding from DARPA, IARPA, and a bunch of other uh, government agencies and foundations and measured hundreds of brain signals electrically uh, and then used a very systematic statistical technique to winnow those down over many years into signals that consistently predicted what people would do after an experience. So again, our, our theory was that if you did something uh, uh, difficult or costly or hard, post on social media, remember the information two weeks later, we did this over and over and over, it must have had such an impact on your brain that that experience was uh, sufficiently valued that it motivated an action. Um, so what we found were basically two things. We found um, that you had to pay attention to the experience, that's kind of a given, uh, but importantly, you had to actually be emotionally resonant with it. You actually had to care about it. So uh, a friend of mine recently called it the give a shit measure. You actually have to care about what's happening and the brain is a very uh, metabolically uh, active organ. And so getting you to care about it takes a lot of energy. And so the brain would rather not do that if it's not interesting enough. Um, so uh, finding those signals, we then convolve them in ways that would optimize predictive accuracy. And they say, okay, this is great for a, a laboratory, maybe great for government use, but what about regular humans? So uh, about four years ago, we launched a, a software platform that uh, I believe democratizes neuroscience. We took uh, data from uh, wearables. So 30% of the uh, population now has smartwatches. And we took these algorithms and put them in the cloud and we uh, uh, did all the processing uh, very, very rapidly in efficient ways. And I'm actually measuring our sessions right now and we uh, normed this and uh, individually corrected it so we can assess in real time how much your brain loves an experience. So I call this neurologic state immersion. And, uh, and we started a software company called Immersion Neuroscience that lets anybody do this. So look, I just turned green. I really am excited about uh, telling you guys how much uh, work has gone into letting anybody measure what people's brains love in real time, where people really are, not just in laboratories. So. That's what we're doing. I'm green. Yay.